I'm interested in the interplay between real government conspiracies and conspiracy theories about the government. And that's why I start the book in World War I, because that's when the government really gets big enough to carry out real conspiracies against American citizens, and sometimes does carry out conspiracies, particularly spying on Americans. Sometimes conspiracy theories can actually be quite helpful for democracy because they can prod the government to release more documents so we know more about our history. But at the same time, sometimes they can be very corrosive and uh, make Americans so distrustful of their government that it makes it impossible for the government to function. Well, certainly the one that we know the most about would be Richard Nixon, because he taped himself and uh, there were so many documents from the Nixon administration. But the presidents since Nixon have been careful not to, not to tape themselves and not to keep too many documents. And so uh, there might have been someone who was even more conspiratorial than, than, than he, and we might not ever know who that was. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, I think, to be a citizen in a democracy, because you have to constantly educate yourself. You have to uh, be skeptical of the government and demand that the government tell you what's going on so that you can make informed decisions. But you also have to be skeptical of the conspiracy theorists about the government and demand that they give you information so that you can make the most informed decision. I don't know. Um, some of my colleagues have asked me, why are you always so interested in, in secrets and lies? Because all of my books are about secrets or, or lies. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not sure why. I guess I just think everybody's interested in secrets and lies and, and plots.